Hello and welcome back. As you can see, today I'm working on the head. I've made this nifty little jig to hold the head on my engine stand. I'll flip it over so you can have a look and see how I made it. So all I've done is taken an old exhaust manifold, cut off the flange, used a bit of tube and a bit of plate, a couple of bits of bar for a bit of support, welded it all together and I had to drill a hole here for the stud right in the middle but hopefully this should allow me to work on the head without sliding it around on a bench on the nice new surface where the head has been skimmed so today the first job on the head is probably the most boring job of the whole engine build but it's got to be done and that is grinding or lapping in the valves and by that I mean recutting this face of the valve here to marry up with the head. So why do you need to grind your valves? Well, over time these are going hot cold, hot cold and they have carbon deposits build up on the seat. And over time they won't quite seat properly. You'll have little gaps where the air can escape in or out and you start to lose compression. So, while the head is off and the valves are out, it's a very good time to do this. Now, there are three ways to grind in the valves. Number one is to get the machine shop to do it for you. It, so, it doesn't take any of your time, but it will cost you. Number two is to use a drill. So, you put the valve in the head, attach a drill the other side, and pull it and spin it until it seats. This can be quicker, but not necessarily right, as you can pivot the valve and cut away the head on one side more than the other. Or option number three, which I would say is the better way to do it. Number one, it's mostly free. As long as you have the stuff laying about like I do, it won't cost you a penny. But it is tedious and time consuming, and you'll probably have blisters on your hands by the end of it. So, I'm gonna show you how to do number three. So, for this, you're only gonna need a few things, and the first one is a valve grinding stick. Usually, you could pick these up for less than five pound, and to go with that, some valve grinding paste. One I've chosen has got a coarse and a fine side to the tub, so, two different compounds of grinding paste. We're also gonna need a little can filled with oil, some brake cleaner, and a rag. So the head has already been chemically cleaned while it was down at Scholar Engineering, but because we're gonna start with cylinder number one, exhaust valve number one, I'm just gonna give that just a quick spray of brake cleaner just to make sure there is no debris in there. So as you saw in a previous video, I took all the valves out in turn and put them in a labelled pot. So I've grabbed my exhaust, which is now this side because the head is upside down, my exhaust valve number one, and I'm going to use the oil can to give the stem a light coating of oil. This is so when we put it in the valve guide itself, it's nice and lubricated and won't do any dry rubbing. So now it's time to grab the valve stick. So you can see it's got a suction end on there. Make sure this and the face of the valve are nice and oil free and stick it on. So now you can move it fairly easily just with the stick. Then grab a little bit of your lapping compound and put it on the seat of the valve. And then you want to use the motion on the stick like you were starting a fire. And every now and then, pull the valve up, rotate it 90 degrees and start again. So 
So after a while you'll hear the pitch change like there's no grit in there. You could just apply a little more paste. And go at it again. So every now and then take the valve out and have a look at the seat and see how it's coming on. Make sure there's no lines and make sure you're getting away some of the soot that was on there. Eventually that gritty grinding sound will disappear quicker and quicker at which point it's time to wipe off all the coarse stuff. Re-oil it up. And change to the finer paste. So I've been going at number one for a while and as you can see the seat is nice and shiny, there's no lines in it and there's no carbon deposits and if you look compared to number two, the old one is sooty all the way around. As long as the valve seat in the head looks very similar to then you're almost there. Just carry on until the grinding stops and then clean it out completely. So I have finished with valve number one and you can see there's a clear color difference between valve number one and valve number two. There's no score marks, there's no carbon deposits, there's no lines. So that one now is done. Just another 15 more to go. So that is all the exhaust valves finished. So I'm halfway through and I'm wondering to myself, 
why is this going so quick and easy? Well, this is engine number six. And when I purchased this engine, I took it all apart and done the head gasket anyway, because the seller didn't know how many miles was on it. So a bit of security, I done the head gasket, belt, and a few other seals at the same time. But I completely forgot I had already ground these in. So usually this job will take a lot, a lot longer, but I'm very lucky and it's going really quick. Now, onto the intake valves. Oh, and one more thing I forgot to inform you of. If you do get any of the grind and paste down in the valve stem, don't carry on grinding. Clean it all out or else you're gonna ruin the valve stem. Make sure that thing is nice and clean. So I'm having a little bit of a hard time getting the intake valves to stick to the valve grind and stick itself. Uh, I've never actually used this one before, I did have a larger stick before with a larger suction cup which I think helped as there's quite a recess in the intake domes. So the internet says try hot glue, let's give it a go. Okay, so that didn't work whatsoever. The hot glue stuck to the valve grinding stick, but not at all to the valve. So I've come up with my own idea, and that is to use a bit of clay bar, as in the bar you would use to decontaminate your car. I've got just enough just to fill the recess of the intake valve, and hopefully that'll take away some of the air gap and be a little bit more sticky. Let's see how that goes. Well, my camera died on the last two valves, but that is all the valve grinding done. So now what I'm gonna do is take this away, give it a very, very good clean and a good blast out with the air compressor. Cause we don't want a single bit of that valve lapping grit in anywhere. If it gets in the valve stems, it's gonna wear them out really quickly. And if it gets in any of the springs or lifters, it's gonna make a really bad noise and do some damage. Now that that's all clean, dry and free of debris it's time for the valve stem seals which look a little bit like this. These are really important as these stop the oil draining from the head down into the combustion chamber and they are two different sizes. One size for the intake and one size for the exhaust and the smaller ones go on the exhaust valve side. Now there are many different makes of these and they all seem to have different colours. This set of gaskets are made by BGA and from what I've worked out the green ones are the exhaust as they are very slightly smaller and the orange brownie ones are the intake. 
The best method I have found of putting these on the valve collets themselves is to oil up the inside just a little bit, grab yourself a socket only just big enough, slide it on and press her down. Out of interest, this is a snap-on 10mm deep six-sided socket which fits almost perfectly. Nice tight fit and the outside is just the same as the metal sleeve. So down here where all the valve spring and everything used to be, you'll see the collet right down in the bottom there. That is where the valve stem seal wants to sit. So I've just lubricated the end very slightly, still in my socket. Locate it and push it down. When fitting these, you will feel the bottom out and just pop into place. So the exhaust side is a little bit smaller and don't fit snug in the 10mm socket. So all I'm doing is lightly putting them on a ballpoint pen and just guiding them into place. Now it's time for the valves. So we're gonna start on the exhaust side with valve number one. Give the stem a light coating of oil. and drop her down and then just gently push it through the stem seal and then turn it back over so I'm going to start off by putting the valve seat washer into its home then the spring and then the spring retainer. And then using the spring compressor, compress the spring down. Now there are many ways to do this next step. Some people like doing it with plastic bags, but I've never chosen that way. So what I do is put a small bit of grease on the collar itself and with a magnetic screwdriver just pop it down into place and then let the pressure off So then it should all look a little bit like this.
if you are using the method that I have used with the magnetic screwdriver and a little bit of grease, just remember where the bucket goes in is a machine surface and just be careful not to scratch it with any tools you're using. If this video has helped you install your valves, write down in the comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time when hopefully I'll be playing with the cams.